Why this won't work? Richard Sherman and Skip. It was um, been reported today that indeed Richard Sherman is going to be joining Undisputed. And he's going to be sitting across from Skip Bayless and um, they're going to be debating topics. Okay. Same format, right? Of course. What's going to be different about this for me and more likely, I'm probably not even going to watch it. Yeah, if I see an interesting topic on YouTube, you know, regarding, you know, whatever episode or topic they're talking about that's being showcased on YouTube. And if it's interesting, yeah, I might, you know, glint, you know, get a glimpse of it as far as in hearing it and watching it. But as far as in me wanting to watch Undisputed, in its entirety, I seriously doubt I will because I just think the chemistry Skimp, I'm sorry, Skip and Shannon Sharp had, it was just it was just at that level. As far as in drawing in a, a, a audience, viewers, if that makes sense. For me, Shannon Sharp, it's almost like should I I don't want to put him and Stephen A. Smith in the same category because the chemistry Stephen A. and Skip had on first take was also, you know, on a different level. It was like, you know, Skip refused, you know, refused to back down to Stephen A. And, of course, Stephen A. refused to back down to Skip. And that's what made their debates great. That's what made their debates um, interesting, watchable. If that makes sense. Because you always would tune in and see who would win in debates, right? And most of the time, Stephen A would win in debates. Even though Skip would give a hard-fought battle, if that makes sense. Or, and then there would be times where Skip would just, you know, would win the debates also. Even though Stephen A. Smith would give a hard-fought battle. So, it's just on that level as far as him. What is these debate shows basically about? It's about, you know, the same topics. Of course, all these debate shows have the same topics. They talk about the same thing regarding sports, right? Or politics or just injustice in the world. But for the most part, it's sports related. So it, they talk about the same thing. For example, Denver Nuggets winning the NBA championship, right? Okay. Basically, most people that's basketball fans know that the Nuggets, I'm sorry, the Denver Nuggets won the NBA championship. And of course, Nikola Jokic was this year's MVP of the finals. They're most I like to think most people know that that watch basketball and they are fans of basketball. Whether they're not fans, I'll still like to think they know that if you ask the question, who won the NBA finals this year? The Denver Nuggets. Who was the MVP? You call Nikola Jokic. Okay. So they basically talk about, you know, the Denver Nuggets. They all, all these debate shows is talking about the Denver Nuggets winning the championship. And then you got some debate shows that, you know, question how they won the championship. Or you got some who feel they shouldn't have won the championship, that they want the rightful, uh, um, 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 they wasn't the rightful team to be considered NBA championships and so forth. Yeah, you got some debate shows that pretty much debate that, but, and then they debate that, you know, oh, Denver only won the championship because the Lakers couldn't get past them. If the Lakers had got past them, the Lakers would have won the NBA championship. Or if Boston would have got past Miami, Boston would have won this year's NBA championship. So they pretty much, some of these debate shows will try to say that, they will try to downgrade the Denver Nuggets winning the championship, right? And they will say things like, oh, Miami was an easy opponent, for example. But I'm just trying to give examples of, you know, how they talk about the same topics. But, yeah, each of these debate shows have a unique style as a way to uh, how they talk about these particular topics regarding sports, politics, um, injustice in the world. But let's, you know, in ETC, but let's just, just stick to sports. So, yeah, each of these debate shows have their own, own unique style and the way they, you know, have these debates regarding these these these, these sports-related topics. Okay, so I like to think most people know that too, right? 
Now, let's get back to Richard Sherman joining Undisputed. Now, for me, again, I don't think, and I, and I could be wrong, it might work, but as of right now, in my opinion, I don't think or I don't see it working because Richard Sherman is not Shannon Sharp. Of course, I, of course, and I don't know if this is like a thing for Undisputed that they think they have to go get a football player to replace another football player, if that makes sense. And for me, I, I, I think maybe perhaps Charles Barkley, if you know, they could have some, somehow came to terms with Charles Barkley. I'm just saying, I'm not saying Charles Barkley will ever join Undisputed. But then again, I don't know. I don't know if he would make that decision or not. But I'm just saying, you know, in a, if, if in an all things equal world, I could see Charles Barkley join Undisputed, and then that would be the reason why I would want to watch Undisputed, if that makes sense. Because Barkley is his own own person, right? Barkley stands on his own two feet. He's not a he's the, he's a he's not a follower. He's a leader, in my opinion. That's a, a personality he portrays to me. You know, Barkley says was on his mind, and yeah. Sometimes he's unapologetic about it, if that makes sense. But for the most time, he is apologetic about if he says something that's just, you know, not a, not appropriate, if it makes sense. If it's not politically correct, if it makes sense. But I just think if Charles Barkley and Skip Bayless were to bait against each other, I think, I, would, I like to think Charles Barkley would win most of the debates because he just wouldn't back down from Skip. I think Charles Barkley would, ch would check skip a lot, especially on topics dealing with race. I really think Charles Barkley would check him on a lot of things, especially the 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 incident that happened between Shannon Sharp and um, Skip. And there were actually two of them. The first was you know, the debate about Tom Brady. You know, I, I want to say the game, he, one of the games he played last year was it was a horrific game he had, right? And Shannon was doing his job, critiquing Tom Brady and saying it was Tom Brady's fault why they lost the game, why he played like, like I think Skip Shannon uses one of his old words, he played like stir fry, stir fry or something like that, right? And of course, Skip, this is Tom, this is you know his boy Tom Brady. Skip, you know, on time does what he traditionally does when it comes to Tom Brady. He defends. He blames everybody else set for Tom Brady when he loses games. And then Tom Brady gets all the credit when he wins games, if that makes sense. But, yeah, this particular episode, Shannon Sharp was trying to do his job as far as in criticizing Tom Brady's play on the field that particular game and how bad he looked, right? And, of course, Shannon Sharp, I'm sorry, Skip Bayless was, you know, defending him. And it got, it got to a point where the debate got so bad, in my opinion, to where it just came off like Skip was being very disrespectful to Shannon because he, you know, he started putting in, you know, he started, like, using, like, ammunition. Like, it's, it's almost what, like when you're losing, a, when you're about to lose an argument with somebody, then you start nitpicking, if that makes sense. <clears throat> and I, I feel this was Skip was doing. He was, instead of you know trying to win the debate and being an adult about it and being you know an analyst and not just a fan of Tom Brady, he chose to not only disagree with Shannon Sharp's take on how bad Tom Brady played, but he chose to utilize the nit nitpicking tactic, which he would say, "Well, Tom Brady is ever Tom Brady." Was, was was way better than you than you could ever imagine in your career or something like that. And it got to the point where Shannon Shaw had to tell him, why are you, what are you talking about? I won three Super Bowls myself. You're trying to talk to me like I was a dud on the field or something. And, of course, Shannon Shaw, well, so what? Tom Brady won seven. You won three. Uh, this and that. Uh, Tom Brady has way more accolades than you and so forth. So, instead of it being a debate, it turned into Oh, you're you're picking on my favorite um, athlete, my favorite football player, Tom Brady, who I think is the GOAT, right? 
and most people would probably agree. Well, I don't know about most. Some would agree with him about Tom Brady being the GOAT, right? Okay. But um, these are the tactics Skip chose to use against Shannon. And instead of Shannon backing down, it made it seem like they was about to fight on national TV. But, of course, they went to commercial, and then, of course, cooler heads prevailed. Okay, fine, whatever. Then there was the incident about the guy from the Buffalo Bills. I cannot I want to say Damar Hamilton or something. I think that's his name. But, of course, that tragic, that tragic uh, uh, event that took place with him regarding the hit he took on the football field and then later – after he got back up, he ended up collapsing on the field, of course. And his heart stopped. We all know that. I don't even want to bring this up because he's making a, a, a full recovery now. And there's talks that he's going to re resume his football career. So, of course, yeah, we know that that tragic, if, if, well, you can't say tragic because he lived. Let's just say that the incident that was not too pleasant happened. Okay. But instead of, now, okay, we'll say it like this. Most people were sympathetic as to what happened to DeMar, DeMar, DeMar Hamilton. I, I, I want to say it was DeMar Hamilton. I got to look up his name. I want to say it's DeMar Hamlin, Hamlin or to Hamilton, something like that. I'm going to look his name up, but most people are sympathetic regarding what happened to him on the field, right? But, of course, Skip had to say something so ignorant and so stupid and, and so in, in, in his ability to not even show contrition after he said it. It was just horrific on all levels regarding someone, you know, almost having something to a, happen to him to a point where the consequences was going to be severe. And for Skip to say what he said it was just horrible. He said that, why is everybody, why are we pausing it? Why are we like putting the game on hold? This is one of the most important games of the season. We are trying to see where the playoff position is going to take place after this game. And you're going to stop the game in the middle of, you know, of it being, you know, close like it is, just so, you know, such and such. Now, I don't remember the words in, 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 in its entirety, but I remember some of it. But it was just horrific what Skip said. And he was not, like I said, he was non-apologetic about it. And... He showed no contrition afterwards. So this caused Skip to not even show up for the Undisputed episode the next day, right? And then all of a sudden, I think two days later, maybe it was a day after, Shannon appears on the show, and he explained why he wasn't on the show after, you know, that uh, uh, event that took place, that non-pleasant event that took place. So... Uh, Shannon said what he said, and then Skip, being Skip, still was not apologetic and was not showing no contrition. So that caused Shannon to just be like, you know what, Skip, just drop it. Okay, fine. Drop it. Just don't say nothing else about it. We're done. Okay? So I think after that episode, that was the beginning of the end between Shannon Sharp and Skip. So, and when I heard the news that Shannon Sharp was leaving Undisputed, yeah, it made me feel a certain way about it because I'm like this Shannon Sharp is really the only reason I watch the show because he brings that type of intensity that type of charisma that type of knowledgeable that type of intellect if it makes sense to compete with Skip who yeah in his own right is also intellectually gifted like that and he brings that intensity and he's very knowledgeable as far as in you know knowing his sports I mean Skip has been in the sports game for decades, right? So, okay. But still, I, for the most part, watch the show because of Shannon Sharp. Because I was just always amped to see who's going to win the debates between him and Skip. And I like, I just dislike Shannon Sharp's soliloquies on how he articulated his opinions on why he felt a certain way, a way about a team or an athlete. So... I think after that episode, I think that was the beginning of the end for Shannon Sharp and Skip. And like I said, when it was announced that Shannon Sharp was leaving months after, yeah, it made me feel a certain way. And I was hoping it wasn't true, but yeah, of course, after the finals in June, Shannon Sharp confirmed everything. So, 
Oh, uh, basically, these are my reasons why I feel Richard Sherman is not going to work on Undisputed because of that type of chemistry, that type of intensity, and that type of intellect Shannon Sharp brought to the show and that type of charisma. I just don't see Richard Sherman bringing that type of intensity. I, I think there are going to be times where Shannon Sharp will back down from Skip. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. And maybe I should watch some episodes just to see how it's going to work. But we'll see. But no, I think as of right now, for the most part, no, I don't think Richard Sherman is going to work on Disputed or Undisputed. That's clearly my opinion. I could be wrong about this, but it is my opinion. So, 